Hi guys, David here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make a toilet roll holder out of a few bits of scrap wood and a broomstick. So let's get into it. Okay, so this is our preliminary sketch. My son sketched it. This is his idea for a toilet roll holder. There's going to be two toilet rolls mounted on the wall. So after we had our first sketch, we started to make a plan and we measured some toilet rolls and discovered we needed 12 centimeters for each toilet roll. We need something to connect it to the wall and these two struts to hold the rod in the air. The rod's gonna be a piece of old broomstick and these are just some scraps we've got around the workshop. This is how it looks from the front and this is how it looks from the side. Maybe we can give it some more shape take off the corners and make things a bit more elegant. And then the next thing we did, after making the plan, we made a cutting list. Here's our cutting list. The piece for the back, 14 centimeters, the two struts, the rod, which is the broomstick, and end caps, which are these little things here to stop the toilet rolls falling off the end of the pole. Okay, so now we've got a plan, we've got a cutting list, we found some materials and now let's get into it. Let's start working. All right, so here's some of the materials we chose. This is our broomstick. And this is a piece of old teak flooring. It's got a couple of grooves in the edges. So I'm just gonna have to take these off and straighten up an edge before I cutting, start cutting things out to dimension. And to take the grooves off, I think I'm just gonna plane them off with a hand plane. Talking of which, the tools you're gonna to need for the job you're going to need a plane, not have to, but it'll help. Don't really need a mallet. <laughs> I don't know why there's a mallet on the table. You don't need a mallet. You're going to need a saw, some way of putting some screws in or electric screwdriver or handheld screwdriver. It really doesn't matter, but you are going to need a drill with a couple of different size bits for the screws. Here I've got a four millimeter bit with a countersink on the end and a two and a half millimeter bit, which is what I'm gonna need for four millimeter screws. And a square, a pencil, and some way of taking measurements or a tape measure or a ruler, something like that. Now we've got a nice <coughs> straight edge. I'm just checking for squareness. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's pretty square. And now I'm going to start marking out, according to my cutting list, all the pieces I need. And I generally start with the largest pieces first. And my largest piece is 14 centimeters by 7 centimeters. So I'm just going to mark that out and rip a piece off. These two pieces are going to be connected on here like this. And the rod is gonna pass through them. So I'm gonna to need to drill a hole big enough for this pole to go through the middle. So let's go over to the drill press and get these guys drilled out. I'm gonna use a drill press to drill the holes. If you don't have a drill press, you can drill them by hand. Just try to be accurate. You can see I've marked the middle of the piece and enough room from the end so there'll be some material here and the broomstick won't fall out. So mark it, mark them both the same. And now on the drill press, what I can do, let's pick up the table a little bit. I've got a fence on this piece of wood, nothing fancy, just a old cupboard door or something with a fence on it. And if I bring the fence, so that the drill sits beduke on my exactly on my mark like this. Now, with a clamp, I can grab a hold of this and put another clamp on the other side as well. And now my drill bit. It's going to be right in the center 
and it'll keep the work from spinning around because of the fence. If I try drilling a small piece in the middle of here, it might spin around and I'm gonna get injured. Wear glasses. Just get all the sawdust out of the way. And now the second. There we go. One of these two pieces are just the same. Okay, so now we just like to bevel these corners to make things look a bit more elegant. I'm gonna use the plane and bevel the corners. If you don't have a plane, just take a block of wood with some sandpaper on it, put it at about 45 degrees, and you can bevel the corners like this too. I'm gonna to use the plane, it leaves a nicer finish. And it's just a small piece of wood as well. So. Quite a big bevel I put on there. Now I should do the long edges first, because if I go and do across the grain now, I might break a corner off here. Once I've planed that corner off already, no problem. up in the corner like this. Something like this. And I'm gonna do the same with these small pieces. Okay. So now we've got all our corners beveled. We need to position these pieces. We're gonna drill some holes and screw them in place. Okay, so this is the situation we're gonna to get to. Now I need to drill these holes. So first of all, I'm gonna drill a very small pilot hole and then I'm gonna line it up in the right position and go through here and make two and a half millimeter pilot holes here for the screws. If I don't do pilot holes, this wood is gonna split and crack. It's quite small. So I'm gonna put two and a half millimeter holes here, and in here I'm gonna drill four millimeter holes. But I'm gonna start with the two and a half millimeter pilot holes. So the reason for a big hole in the base is so the screw will pass freely through this and then the teeth of the screw will catch in these small holes and pull everything together tight. That's why we're drilling two different size holes. So now I'm just going to bring the screws and we'll assemble it. I'm going to put the screws partially through like this. Everything. 
everything's in place. And I can just close up those screws. I'm going to actually do it with a hand screwdriver and I can feel if there's too much resistance, if I should have drilled a bigger hole or a deeper hole. important to countersink the backs because when this is screwed on the wall you don't want the screw heads poking out and pushing it off the wall. Talking of which, according to my plan now, I should have two holes also drilled here and here for mounting it on the wall. So now everything's connected. We've drilled the holes <clears throat> to mount it on the wall and I've prepared these two little caps for the ends so the toilet paper doesn't fall off the ends and I want to break these corners like I broke these corners at 45 degrees uh, but this is very small and difficult to hold and work with the plane so what I'm going to do I'm going to put the plane upside down inside the vise. Now be careful when you're doing this because planes are made out of cast iron and if you close your vise too tight you can break the casting. Now be careful of your fingers. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. I've got those corners all broken. I'm going to touch it all up with a bit of sandpaper afterwards, but that's good for now. And to connect them on the ends here, my son found a couple of nice brass screws. So we decided we we're going to connect these on here with brass screws. So I've drilled the pilot holes here just remains to drill another couple of small holes. Brass screws are soft. You must drill a pilot hole, even if it's in soft wood. Otherwise, when you try to screw it in, you're gonna rip the head and you'll be stuck with it halfway in and halfway out. So I'm just gonna drill those pilot holes. So I'm just gonna put a bit of glue to help it, make it strong. My screws could be a bit longer, but they're so pretty in brass. I'm gonna use them anyway. You've got a longer screw, you don't really need the glue. Okay, it's starting to look quite cute. I guess we'll get these two guys in line. Okay then folks, so here's our toilet roll holder finished. The glue's dried. I gave it a light sanding all over. It's nice and smooth. You could put an oil finish on it if you like, you could put lacquer. I think it's a good idea to put some sort of finish on it though because it's in the toilet. So you can always be able to clean it. Uh, as you can see, it takes two rolls of toilet paper, like this. And uh, I think that's a great addition to anyone's bathroom. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. You can subscribe over there somewhere. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.